Think of it. Ten billion robots, each one needing an oil change every 3,000 miles. You don't have to do the math to know that's a buttload of oil. Can I wear your fat suit? No, Igner, put that down! Oh. Futurama is widely considered one of the best animated series of all time. And in the long off year of 3000, Mom's Friendly Robot Company is the biggest company in the world and among the largest in the universe. That's why today we're talking about just how much Carol Miller, aka Mom, is worth. Before we get into this, just a reminder to make sure you subscribe if you like this video and follow me on Twitter to yell at me for all the things I missed. And of course, spoilers ahead for a show that ended for like the fourth time five years ago. Shut your filthy clam! Thank you, Walt. Before we start talking about Mom, let's try and nail some stuff down about the Futurama universe. So the first thing we can surmise is that they are still using dollars as currency. We hear them talk about money in the form of dollars many times throughout the series, but the biggest piece of evidence is in the episode A Fish Full of Dollars. In this episode, we see Fry attempt to access his old bank account that has been dormant for the past thousand years. The fact that his bank account has been left open and accumulating interest means that the currency in the future is the same as the currency now. Next, let's take a look at inflation and figure out just how much a dollar in the future would be worth today. In the episode 300 Big Boys, the Planet Express crew are all given $300 back from the world government. That's right, I've sent you each 300 buckaroos in the form of a tricky dick fun bill. Knock yourselves out! Fry decides to buy 100 cups of coffee with his money. This means in New New York, a cup of coffee costs $3, which is actually about the same as a cup of coffee in New York today. That means that a dollar in the future is about the same as a dollar today, so we don't need to worry about adjusting for inflation. Now let's move on to what we know about Mom and her company MomCore. The earliest we see of a corporation of a similar name to Mom's is the Friendly Robot Company. So at some point, MomCore either absorbed that company or Mom inherited the business. Either way, we'll be starting our calculations in 2920. So now let's get into just how much Mom and her corporation are making per year. Back in 2007, Forbes did a list of the most profitable fictional companies and gave estimated profits to the companies listed. On that list was MomCore, which Forbes estimated at a $289.1 billion profit. Though to me, this seems more like just Earth profits. So to find out how much they're making on a universal scale, we'll take a look at the Democratic Order of Planets, or DUPE. We'll assume that since Mom operates primarily on Earth, that she is limited in some way, shape, or form to selling to DUPE planets. After counting what species we can see in the various scenes with Dupe and doing some estimation based off Star Trek's Federation, we'll say that Dupe is around 50 planets including Earth. So we'll multiply their profits by 50 to try and compensate for this. That means MomCore is making $17,653,900,000,000 annually. Now let's try and find out just how much Mom is making from her company. In order to do this, we'll use a similar method to what we used in our Frank Reynolds video. We'll look at how much a similar company profited, how many stocks the company has out, and then what percentage of the total profits they paid out. The closest company I could think of with this information readily available would be Apple. In 2017, Apple had a revenue of $229.23 billion. They had 2,876,494,300 stocks out, and they paid out a total of $7,076,175,978 that year. That's a total of 3.09% of their revenue to their stockholders. If MomCore were to pay out 3.09% of its revenue, it would pay out $545,505,510,000 a year. We know that Mom owns 99.7% of the company, and thus she'd be getting 99.7% of what it's paying out. She would likely be taking this instead of a typical salary, so at its best, Mom would be making $543,868,993,470 a year. But we know of at least two things for the series that would have had a drastic impact on MomCore and its revenue. The first thing would be the monopoly that Mom holds over Dark Matter. MomCore was contracted by Dupe in 2970 and holds her monopoly until Dark Matter is rendered useless again in 3008 and spaceships are converted to run on whale oil. Outside of these 38 years, we'll have MomCore making 30% less than it would at its peak. Next, and by next I mean a little over 50 years prior, is the big breakthrough that comes in 2928 when Professor Farnsworth recreates robots into what we see throughout the series. So before that, we'll be saying that they're only making 50% of the revenue. So from 2920 to 2928, the company would be making six quadrillion one hundred seventy-eight trillion eight hundred sixty-five million dollars They'd be paying out $190,926,928,500 to stockholders, and for her 99.7%, Mom would be making $190,354,147,714. Even for a woman with incredibly expensive tastes, 1% of that would be enough to live incredibly comfortably. 
Thus, we'll be having mom put away a whopping 99% of her income after taxes. And as far as taxes go, because we don't really know what they'll be like in the future, we'll be using a base of 37%. On top of that, we'll be giving mom the same interest rate on her bank account that Fry had for a thousand years, 2.25%. At that rate, mom would have 1,316,836,588,302 dollars by 2928. As stated earlier, this is the year where the modern robot is created and mom's profits would soar. So for the next few decades, mom would be making 239,070,024,741 dollars after taxes. It would continue that way until 2970 when mom begins fueling ships with antimatter. At this point, mom would have 19 trillion, 304 billion, 733 million, 326,251 dollars. The next 38 years are when mom core is operating at maximum revenue. During this time, mom would also invest in several major things that will attribute to her instead of her business. The most expensive of these being the mom core flagship we see several times throughout the series. In the episode Future Stock, we have a clear shot of the Planet Express ship and mom ship. While not in the frame at the same time, we can get them at a similar distance in order to try and compare sizes. So now we have to find the size of the Planet Express ship. Bender's height is revealed in the episode The Cyber House Rules when he shows a picture of himself in a police lineup to the orphan children. Bender's about 5'8", with a total of 6'2", if you include his antenna. Now let's compare Bender's height to the Planet Express ship. The Planet Express ship, not including its legs, is about 5 and 3 quarters Bender's tall. That means the Planet Express ship is 28.42 feet tall. The sides of Mom's ship are 4.5 Planet Express ships wide and 8.5 ships high. This means the sides are 127.89 feet wide and 241.57 feet tall. In terms of finding out the volume of these, we'll be treating both sides together as a cylinder. The sides would have a total volume of 3,100,000 cubic feet. We'll do the middle part in a similar manner, but we'll divide it in half. The middle part is 170.52 feet tall and 56.84 feet wide. It would have a volume of 216,500 cubic feet. This means that mom's ship has a total volume of 3,316,500 cubic feet or 93,912.82 cubic meters. The easiest thing to compare mom's ship to would be the Death Star. The Death Star has a radius that varies between 140 and 160 kilometers, so we'll be using 150 kilometers. This means it has a volume of 14,100,000 kilometers or 14,100,000,000 cubic meters. A student blog estimated that the Death Star would have cost 852 quadrillion dollars to create. Since mom's ship is 0.00066% the size of the Death Star, we'll scale it to that. That means mom's ship would still cost an estimated 5,623,200,000,000 dollars. Mom also owns a building in New New York. For the price of this, we'll use the most expensive skyscraper, the One World Trade Center. This building, which is coincidentally also in New York, costs $3.9 billion. And finally, we'll try and price that Arctic base that mom has. I found this handy dandy PDF online that has actually tried to figure out just how much a similar evil lair can go for. There are a few things in this that we don't really need to worry about, such as paying minions, since they would just be getting paid through the company. The building that this person used was the MI6 building in London, with the assumption that this building would be up to par with surveillance and technology. This would cost around 150 million euros or 170 million 157,750 dollars. So now let's add everything up until 3008, when Mom's dark matter monopoly failed. By this time, Mom would have 58 trillion 875 billion 24 million 826,828 dollars. After this, Mom's revenue would go back down by 30%. And with her current trajectory, by 3018, she would have 76 trillion, 227 billion, 225 million, 95,868 dollars. Her ship would still be worth 5 trillion, 623 billion, 200 million dollars. And we'll tack on another 4 billion for the Arctic base and skyscraper. So mom, not including her company's worth, which would be astronomic, is worth 81 trillion, 854 billion, 455 million, 95,868 dollars which is a grossly high number and it's kind of hard to imagine just how much money that actually is. So to put it into perspective, the global GDP for 2017 was actually slightly lower than that. But anyways, this has been 10k Bill and thanks for watching and thanks for getting us over 10,000 subscribers. If I missed anything, tell me on Twitter at 10k Bill or comment it down below. Support our Patreon if you're so inclined and want to see even more videos and make sure to subscribe for all your entertainment related content.